Hey guys, MC Craw here, and welcome back to another episode of Redstone Rulebook. Today's lesson is lesson three on the Redstone Torch. Alright guys, so the first thing you guys want to learn how to do is craft a Redstone Torch. I think this is the first thing I've had in mind where it's craftable. Yep. Alright, so you'll want a stick and a redstone and a torch. And you got your torch. Very simple. This is what it looks like. Pretty. And uh, this is it attached to every side of this block. Just to show where, where it can be placed. Uh, it cannot be placed on top of transparent blocks. Uh, a half, st half step is considered a uh, transparent block because it has an area in which it is transparent. And uh, yeah, you can place them on top of some unique box boxes that uh, when you right click them they actually attach but there's a specific way you have to attach them uh, in order to actually get them on the on the block you have to have a block behind it that you can't actually place the torch on see if I were to try to place it on here and I click it it will be placed on the block below see because I'm not actually touching that block uh, since I mean, well, since we're not actually touching this block, it will actually uh, attach to it, like so. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the uh, same thing goes with the uh, chess. All right. Uh, you can also place them on uh, posts. However, I find that to be very, very useless. I'm just saying. Um, as a power source, uh, it can only power redstone for 15 blocks. This is the 16th block. When a power source is going into a block that the torch is uh, attached to, the torch will then become unpowered. Uh, this is commonly referred to as inverting. So right now the torch is inverted. Uh, you can do uh, this uh, vertically as well. Uh, when you place a block here and then the block above is powered with a torch on top, the torch will become unpowered. And if you do this enough, you get this sort of effect here. As you can see, unpowered, powered. Then it's powered and then unpowered. A very common way to run power vertically in a single line. Now, when you want to uh, power, uh, let's see if I can get my redstone here, and no, give me back. When you want to power uh, or invert a torch and you have wire coming in like this, it's hard to get, you, you can't just go like this and try to get the power in there. Uh, you have to have one line going directly into this uh, block or you can power the block directly in order to do this you can just place the uh, place a piece of redstone on top of the block and then the torch will now become inverted like so alright guys so one thing you can't do is uh, invert a torch with a uh, with a post under it um, you can however invert the ones right here. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. Inverted. Bam. Alright. Where did I leave off? Oh yeah. The the old repeater. Um, for a lot of you new redstoners, uh, this is kind of useless, but uh, a lot of you old school guys will remember this. The redstone repeater, which is this, uh, is actually what replaced this old school repeater. Uh, it does exactly the same thing. Uh, the output is on, and then it takes the power. It is inverted twice, and then you have the same as uh, the the start. So this is the on and on. Uh, now the issue with this is it takes one, two ticks in order for it to power. So it takes a longer time than this repeater does. This repeater takes one tick or as an adjustable up to four ticks. Uh, redstone torch can power any blocks adjacent on the, on the same plane, uh, but it cannot uh, power any blocks that are 
uh, um, was that diagonal from it at a horizontal on a horizontal plane. If you want to get them powered, you have to put power attached to them. Redstone torches can power a block from below, and then power the redstone on top of it. Uh, and in the same way, can power it diagonal from it. It is very important to understand that the power is not actually traveling diagonally. Uh, it is traveling up. The power is going from the redstone torch into this block, and the power will go out to any blo any block or any redstone adjacent to this block. And that just so happens to be this is the spot. And if I were to place a block here, remove that, it would be right here. So the power is actually going into this block. It is not just powering diagonally. Now, what we have here is uh, a bit of a situational issue. Uh, just like with these, the power will power on top of the block, and it will power on the side, or, or diagonally on the block, but diagonally only in three directions. It will not power properly on the block that it is uh, attached to. The reason being is because the power is going to go up into this block, and then want to power this redstone. Uh, and then, in turn, try to depower this torch, just like I showed you back in the inverted state over there. Uh, so it's going to create an infinite loop, which is going to update every point zero zero five seconds or something. It's very fast, and you guys will see this in a second. Now, when it does that, and it's left on for a certain amount of time, the torch will then burn out. As you guys heard, there was a hissing noise. That hissing noise is to indicate that the torch is burnt out. Now, in 1.8.1 and below, I do believe there's a bug that if you, if you knock the torch off while it's turned off like this, uh, then, and you try to replace the torch back down, it will automatically try to turn off. Now, it came back on there because I updated it from two blocks away, but I updated it. And, um, so, yeah, and I haven't had that issue with the 1.9 point, or 1.94 pre-release pre 4, so I'm pretty sure it's just 1.8.1 below. Alright, guys, moving on. Uh, this is my short logic take, uh, short logic gate section. Uh, first one we have here is pretty much your standard input output gate. Basically, it means when the lever's on, so is the output. Uh, or when the input's on, so is the output. Uh, now, as far as the levers are concerned, when the lever is up, it's actually off. When the lever is down, it's on. So keep that in mind throughout this tutorial. Uh, now what we have here is a NOT gate. Uh, now what a NOT gate is, basically an inverted input-output gate. Very simple stuff. Now this is an AND gate. Uh, now basically it means that our output is not going to turn on unless I use this butt, unless I use this lever and this lever. As you can see there. Now, if I were just to use this one, would not work? Just this one? No. They both have to be on for them to work. Now, there is what is called a NAND gate, which is, uh, to simplify it, is a inverted AND gate. Just like we talked about that one over there, all you do is remove the torch and the output is now inverted. So now it just means that the output will be on instead of off while you have to use both levers. It just means it's inverted. So place that back. This right here is an OR gate. Uh, so in order for the output to be turned on, you can use this lever or this lever. If I do this one, nothing happens. This one, nothing happens, because that one's on. Lift them both up, and then the power is now off. So I can use this one, or this one. Now this right here is what makes life wonderful in Minecraft. This is what is commonly known as a RS NOR latch. Now, or a memory cell. 
depending, you know, on, on how you're looking at it. Alright guys, so what I mean by memory cell is that when one part of the memory cell is activated, it will stay at that state until you tell it to activate differently. And by that, I will tell you this. Right now, um, from this point of view, the output the uh, on the left side is on. The output on the right side is off. I press this button, and they change. Now, if I were to try to do this again, nothing will happen. If I come to this side and I press the button, the situation changes again. And if I try to press it, it will not activate again. So, with this, this is uh, with the AND gates and with the RS NOR latches and all these basic things. This is how people create computers in Minecraft. I know it doesn't seem like much, but these are the basics of what is required to make a computer. Um, now the last one I wanted to show you guys here is uh, possibly my favorite. It's what's called the 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 five clock. This is the uh, old school one which just uses torches and redstone. So when you start this puppy up, this is what you get. You get a pulsing signal here which is like very very close to one second it is probably like 0 0.04 0 0.08 difference uh, between one actual second um, and yeah so this is this is my favorite and if you guys haven't seen it already I actually have a tutorial on making these very compact uh, using repeaters um, it can be done but repeaters lag out when you log off and when you yeah when you log out and you come back in so nothing better than an old reliable five clock alright guys so today's gadget is gonna be a combination lock for a door or for whatever unit you want powered uh... so just um... and the reason why i picked a simple combination lock is because it utilizes the not gate uh, the uh, input output gate, the AND gate, so it kind of incorporates all the gates I was telling you guys about, and uh, so you guys can kind of see what they do. So uh, I'm gonna start off here by building a wall. Oops, there they are. And then I'm gonna build a door here. Right there, I need a door. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. All right, I got my door. And I want to put my lever right there. I mean, my button. Now I need some levers. Don't need the door anymore. One, two, three. And what the hell, let's add one more. I don't know why I got rid of that one that I did. Okay. And right there. Okay, so... Just to... Uh, just kind of show you guys what's going on here. I'm going to put my outputs here and I'm going to er invert them all for now and then when we make our passcode I will then remove the ones that I need now and then we have our input here for our button okay so what do we have alright so we have a bunch of uh, not gates here technically and then we have an input output uh, gate very simple and then uh, what we want to do is make it so that when all of these are off then the output is off so let's uh, let's go ahead and set that up Whoops. very simple there's other ways to do this but I'm just doing it like this and okay so now we have uh, so now we have all this powered and if I put a torch on the end here then that's off okay so now this is off and this is off okay guys so after reviewing this for a second uh, I actually found a, a better way to do this um, so what we're gonna do now is instead of powering it like I just did uh, I am just going to extend this 
I am going to put a torch on that side, and then I am going to extend this over here. Okay, now what this does is that this button is always going to power this line, which is going to invert this. This will be our output to the door, let's say, okay? Now, what, what happens now is that we need to flip all the levers on our combination, which at the moment is all of them, this one, this one, this one, and this one, uh, in order to turn the power line off, but then we have to press the button. We press the button, then it activates. Now, not much of a combination when they're all the same, right? Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that one and that one. Those need to be opposite of the others. So in order for them to actually turn off now, it's the, so the combination is just this one and this one. And now we press the button and it opens up our door. Pretty simple. Uh, now, if if they're all pressed down, the combination will will not work. The combination, like you actually have to have all of them in the proper spot in order for it to work. So it'll be right there. So that's your simple um, simple gate utilizing the uh, not gate the input output gate and the AND gate which shows that uh, it has to be this lever and this lever and that button in order for that to power so just a simple uh, show of you know what you guys can do um, <clears throat> there was a easier way to compact this I just wanted to show it like this for visual reference uh, so Okay, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you guys liked what you see. If you guys like this uh, series, please like it, favorite, all that good stuff. Please leave your comments. I will get to as many as I can. And uh, that will let me know you guys want me to continue this series. So, uh, as always, guys, I will see you on the flip side.